Carl Jung's works in the field of psychology affected many different aspects of society. In a time of great uncertainty about humanity after World War I and the decline of religion, many turned to Jung's work for guidance and understanding of the human character. He not only created a new branch of psychology by exploring ideas such as the unconscious, individuation, and archetypes, but also helped start the international psychoanalytic movement and brought about a whole new understanding of self and humanity. Carl Jung was born on July 26, 1875, in Kessville, Switzerland. His father was a clergyman, and the rest of his family was very religious. As a child, Jung was deeply involved in linguistic studies, but his curiosity did not stop at academics. Carl Jung became interested in observing those around him, as well as his family's behavior. In his autobiography, Carl Jung describes his childhood self as having a dual personality. One personality depicting someone seen through the eyes of society, and the other was a more personal, true, and innate personality. This stemmed from a sense of abandonment he felt as a child. His parents often fought, and his mother had been placed in a mental hospital for several months when he was very young. These factors and aspects of his childhood led him to an isolated early life, and provoked him to find a deeper understanding of his own self. When confronted with theological questions, Jung found that he did not completely agree with conventional religion. Instead, he expressed these questions through means of philosophy. Carl Jung enrolled in the University of Basel in 1895 and soon became heavily interested in religion and philosophy. Jung found himself studying many different fields, but finally settled upon medicine and later chose psychiatry as a career. After obtaining his MD at the University of Zurich, Jung began to explore many new concepts in the field of psychology, leading him to eventually cross paths with one of the most well-known psychologists of all time, Sigmund Freud. At the time, Freud was the biggest leader in psychoanalytics, and Jung had been a long-time reader. Jung sent a sample of his signed work to Freud, to which Freud responded by sending back his latest published essays. These formal outreaches led to a six-year partnership and friendship beginning in 1906. Freud had already established himself in the field of psychology, so naturally he saw Jung as a sort of protege and became a father-like figure. Their most notable work together was the Fordham Lectures. The duo traveled to the United States and gave talks about the psychoanalytic field at Clark's University, which in turn sparked the psychoanalytic movement. This movement initiated a great push towards the study of psychoanalytics, mainly in the medicinal field, and spread nationally. It also acted as the birth of the International Psychoanalytic Association, of which Jung quickly became the president. This association's mission was to assure continued research and development of psychoanalysis. Freud and Jung stepped into the spotlight towards the end of their professional relationship. As the movement began to gain momentum, Freud and Jung grew farther apart due to a few ideological discrepancies. I liked him very much, but I soon discovered that when he had thought something, then it was settled. While I was doubting all along the line. Their main disagreement was about the idea of the unconscious. They both believed that each person possessed an ego that acted as their source of desire. The limits to an individual's ego were notated as the superego. Both also believed that the unconscious acted as a storage for unattainable desires and repressed wishes. However, according to Freud, these repressed feelings and memories needed to be vented in order to feel happy and complete. It held the idea of going backwards to improve the present. Whereas Jung believed that to reach a state of completeness, one had to recognize those feelings and integrate them into one's personality, or bring them into the conscious. This held the idea of moving forward with the unconscious and evolving it to improve well-being over time. According to Freud, this was the entirety of the unconscious, but Jung said that there was a deeper level. Freud's idea about the unconscious was what Jung called the personal unconscious. Jung stated that there was also a collective unconscious that was full of shared experiences and memories of all people. With this idea, Jung focused mainly on the concepts of dreams and archetypes. This, along with other differentiating ideas, caused Jung to end their relationship in 1913. He also resigned from his presidency at the International Psychoanalytic Association and fell into a deep depression and secluded himself from the rest of the world for a short period of time. After Jung's unexpected and momentous split from Freud, he became enveloped in his own studies. Jung's greatest accomplishment, of course, was creating a new branch of psychology, analytical psychology. This realm of study focused on ideas such as individuation, the personal and collective unconscious, and art types. Individuation is an umbrella term for the rest of Jung's psychoanalytical studies. In general, it is the process by which individual beings are formed and differentiated from other human beings. In particular, it is the development of the psychological individual as being distinct from the general collective psychology. 
The ideas of the personal and collective unconscious stem from this. The personal unconscious is defined as the layer of the human psyche in which all past ideas, information, memories, and feelings are stored. These experiences are not presently conscious, but have the ability to be brought to the conscious level. The personal unconscious may serve as a storage bank for repressed memories, but at the same time just contain unimportant ones that were dropped from conscious thought. The collective unconscious is much deeper. This level of the unconscious acts similar to that of instinct, and is shared between all of humanity. Anything within the collective unconscious cannot be accessed by the conscious mind. Within the collective unconscious, there are reoccurring elements called archetypes. These are common universal patterns that are deeply rooted within the collective unconscious. These patterns are manifested throughout each psyche of every human being without them being aware of it. The archetypes have no form, but they organize the experiences of our life to essentially create the archetype itself. Although everyone may come in contact with different archetypal experiences in their life, there are common archetypes that have surfaced throughout literature, religion, and culture. For example, the mother archetype is described as that of a comforting and nurturing figure. Another, the shadow, is formed from our instinctual past when survival and reproduction were our main functions of life. Two other archetypes, the anima and animas, represent both the female and male aspects present in our persona. Both have significant effects when it comes to how one defines their sexuality and also plays an important role in one's search for love. Considered the most important archetype of all, the self represents equilibrium within the psyche. This archetype represents a state where neither the anima nor animas is dominant, where there is no distinction between conscious and unconscious, and energy ceases to exist. It also represents the unity of personality and is a product of individuation. Archetypes are found throughout the world in religion, literature, and culture. Although they may be concepts of a largely mysterious branch of psychology, these archetypes have manifested themselves in different parts of the world. For me, people like Carl Jung um, really serve an important kind of leadership role in psychology in that he, they create, Carl Jung, Sigmund Freud, these kinds of people created some of our earliest coherent theories about human behavior um, that whether or not we agree with those theories, these today uh, were really influential in thinking about how complex human behavior is and trying to come up with these coherent explanations for why people behave the way that they do. Society was directly impacted by Jung's works. The beginning of the 20th century saw a challenge to the moral law that the world had clung to for many years past, with horrific events such as World War I, the terror famine of Ukraine, and the dropping of the atomic bombs. The decline in religion and religious power fueled the practice of questioning all across the world. People began to question why people behaved certain ways and how people could commit such atrocities as taking another human's life. People began questioning humanity. In this time of uncertainty, people turned to science and empirical evidence to explain and define humanity. Psychoanalysis fit the masses' need for understanding and created an environment perfect for the psychoanalytic movement, as well as other similar studies to occur and prosper. The effects of Jung's work are still visible today. The establishment of a new branch of psychology greatly impacted the study as a whole. Um, for me, as a social psychologist, where I see his biggest impact in my field is just in terms of uh, making the unconscious mind something that's worthy of investigation and something that can tell us more about the richness of human experience. On Young's the works have also had an effect on everyday life. The idea of archetypes has been explored heavily in media and in literature. One of the most famous and profitable sagas of recent history, Star Wars, is coated with archetypal characters and plotlines. The protagonist of the original trilogy, Luke, can be seen as the perfect archetypal hero. The Force can be seen as the collective unconscious and Luke's training as individuation. Although indirectly, Carl Jung helped create Alcoholics Anonymous through his idea of integrating the unconscious into the self. He also provided a significant amount of ideas that have helped to create the Myers-Briggs personality test, coining the terms such as introvert and extrovert. Carl Jung's legacy is seen in many aspects of society, and as the future progresses, his works are becoming more and more influential. Our world is based around understanding. We desire to learn more and seek out the unknown. Although there have been many times in our history where the social norm is not to question, we have pushed past this in order to explore and make sense of life. The 20th century saw an enormous rise in self-exploration. Carl Jung decided to take this journey and lay a path for the future of understanding. The leadership of Carl Jung is seen in his ability to question. Learning from and challenging a well-established psychologist, Jung broke away from the narrow-sided vision of psychology and integrated other aspects of science and humanities into his studies. 
Carl Jung's studies have become very influential, not only in the foundation of analytical psychology, but also in modern society. His legacy has not only brought about change to our society, but it has more importantly allowed us to better understand ourselves.